Okay, in this video I wanted to look at the EOSIO token smart contract in much more detail because I think it's uh, an important smart contract and one that gets many, many questions asked. So we'll start with the um, EOSIO token.hpp file. Um, this is where they they make a lot of definitions and then uh, they actually make the implementations here in the .cpp file as you'd expect. Um, uh, I'll kind of gloss over the most of this. Uh, they, these are just the function definitions, and uh, they'll get. We'll talk about them more in detail. They'll get uh, actually implemented here in the CPP file, as I said. But uh, the two two things I did want to point out in this HPP file are the definitions of the tables, the uh, multi-indexes that we'll be using um, in the implementation. So we have two um, multi-indexes. Uh, we have an, an account struct that we're calling accounts in the multi-index and then we have a currency stats struct that we're calling stats uh, the stats table if you will and the account has a, an asset in it uh, which they're calling a balance and then uh, the currency stats has two assets a supply a max supply and then an issuer of the token essentially um, so be aware of these as we move into the .cpp file um, since I mentioned assets, we can actually look at the assets.hpp file. There isn't really much. I mean, there's a lot of code here, but you really don't need to know all of it. Really, you just need to know, be aware that there's an amount, which is an int64, and a symbol type, which is really just a uh, string. Actually, we can control B into that, um, or symbol name, you know, whatever. All right, let's keep going down the rabbit hole, actually. Uh, which you can see here is a UN64, but really there's a string to symbol, string to name, all that stuff that you can do here. Uh, so really, again, uh, I, I, as I suggested, I would really just uh, try and keep it a, at a high level and just you know consider these amounts and symbols. Uh, but it, the uh, asset struct does actually have two uh, fairly useful utility methods in it, which is is amount within range and is valid, which checks that the symbol is valid, and then also that the amount is within range. And you can see that the uh, amount within range here is uh, just making sure that it doesn't go above or below the maximum amount you can store in an int64. Uh, so that is essentially the .hpp in a, in a nutshell, very high level overview. Um, you can see they also have these two little uh, util functions defined here as well, get supply and get balance, but uh, we won't talk about those. Uh, we'll go right into the .cpp file um, where the majority of the implementation is actually done. You can see that we have a create function, an issue function, we have a transfer function, and then we have subbalance and add balance in this smart contract. Um, these are really all you really need to know about if you're going to interact with the you know EOS IO, the EOS actual you know currency. You would just need to know about these. It, there's a create function, issue function, and really you don't you don't need to know about either of these because you probably don't have the permissions to do anything about those on the main net. So really all you're concerned with is this transfer function. But if you were going to um, deploy your own ESIO token smart contract, uh, you might want to change these things or at least be aware of them. Um, so we'll look at them now. Again, part of the reason I'm doing this, or I guess I said that previously, uh, part of the reason I'm doing this is I want to do a kind of a difference between the ERC20 token standard and then this ESIO token. So uh, that's another reason why we're looking at this one in order to give ourselves some sort of basis for looking at the ERC20 token standard. So uh, if we start from the top, we have a way of creating tokens. Once you deploy this smart contract, if you were to deploy your own ESIO token uh, smart contract and call it, I don't know, Jackson coin, for example, you would then want to call the create action on Jackson Coin in order to create actual tokens using this smart contract. So uh, eventually, I, I'm not sure that they're there yet, but eventually the plan was to use this ESIO token, the same one that's holding EOS on the mainnet, uh, the plan was to sell symbols on it. So you could essentially create your own token at, at will by bidding on symbols, and you'd have all this functionality built right in, and any time uh, block one updated the SIO token, you would have a, all of their updates, they would also get applied to your symbol token. But what's happening currently is people are deploying their own SIO token to the blockchain, in which case you would need to um, create your own uh, tokens here and calling this method essentially. 
Um, the first thing you're, you'll notice here is it requires the auth of the contract. And again, like while you're watching this video, you can see these little comments that I've sprinkled throughout. These aren't actually block one comments, but they're comments I made while I was going through the code to help uh, elucidate things. Um, so then they check that the symbol is valid. Again, we already kind of looked at that. They also check that the maximum supply is valid and that the amount's greater than zero when you're actually creating your um, your new symbol essentially in this table. Then they get the table, the stats table, which is kind of, uh, well, each symbol name essentially has its own table is essentially what this is doing here. So they'll, um, get, this, they'll get this table. If it doesn't exist, they'll create it. They'll check that the symbol name, if the symbol name is already in the table or not. If it is in the table, then they'll throw an error and you won't be able to create. This is again part of the uh, bidding thing. Like you can't, you shouldn't allow more than one symbol in the in. If everyone was going to share this this same smart contract, right? You wouldn't want to share multiple symbols. Whereby, where is if it's your smart contract, you probably don't care that much. But uh, I mean, other than for logic reasons, right? You don't want to mapping two things in uh, a database. So that's what they're protecting against here. And then uh, if if the, the symbol doesn't exist already in the table, they create it um, and mark the issuer the maximum and the maximum supply as well as, as the symbol. So if we move down from there, now essentially we've created these tokens. We also want a way of issuing these tokens to users. Um, and, and maybe in the case of cre the creator of the smart contract, they want to have all the tokens. So we would issue all the tokens to ourselves here and then we should be able to transfer them at will. Um, so very much the same thing. They're checking validity of things. They're uh, checking that the symbol name doesn't already exist um, or that it does exist in this case because we'll be editing the row um, as you'll see down here in the modify method. Um, Again, they're checking a bunch of other validities, like making sure that the amount that you're trying to issue doesn't exceed the maximum supply, you know, different things like this. Fairly straightforward EOS IOS assert statements. And then assuming everything matches those assert statements, you can then increase the supply of tokens, which is what they're doing here. And then they're adding balance to the issuer. So whoever has issued the tokens, they are now in control of, you know, whatever quantity got passed into this issue. They now have control. If the two, if you're if you're issuing to somebody else rather than yourself, um, they are actually sending this inline action instead, so that you can issue tokens that the issuer of the token themselves can actually issue tokens to somebody else. That's essentially all that's happening here. Um, but we will look at the add balance. Well, actually, let's look at the add balance right now. So that's essentially all that the the issue function does. But but uh, Within this, we're calling the add balance. So if we go down and look at the add balance method, um, what's happening is they're getting the token, or sorry, the accounts table, but it's the accounts table for the owner. So essentially every user inside the YASIO token, every, what you would call the account name, has their own accounts table. So, so essentially if you think about it like this, let's say uh, we do create this Jackson coin token, right? And, and uh, Let's say the token symbol is SJK. So there's this token that exists in the stats table that everybody knows about. There's a maximum supply of like X or whatever, you know, a thousand, let's say a thousand SJK. Well, within this SJK uh, symbol inside of my personal YASIO token smart contract, uh, you could have an accounts uh, uh, row that is keyed to. Um, Let's say that Udemy course. Let's say we have a, a an account called Udemy course. This account has its own table, and in that table, it has the ability to store many different assets. So maybe it has an EOS row, maybe it has an SJK row, maybe it has a, a DAC row, maybe. Um, so, but but if this is the very first time that this uh, this account name, this account name Udemy course ha has hit the smart contract, well, we need to create this 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 table. Uh, on itself. Uh, sorry, uh, one thing to note here is like, okay, so this accounts uh, table has a row for each asset, but remember that an asset is also a, a balance. So we're, we're storing the balance as well as the the symbol inside this accounts. So this is how balances are actually tracked in the ESIO token smart contract is by each account having its own uh, table essentially and then inside that table having a row of separate balances which you can then increment and decrement. So in this case we've created this uh, 
again, if we follow through this example, we have let's say uh, Udemy course. We've 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 either set we've either created this accounts uh, database or we've retrieved it, and then we're finding inside that we're seeing like okay, if we follow this SJK example, does this SJK example row does this exist in the accounts table? If it doesn't then we're going to place it in the table, otherwise we're going to modify it. So that's all that's happening here, is we're, we're getting this table specific to this user, checking it, checking the rows of all possible assets that it's ever interacted with before, and if it hasn't interacted with them before, we give them the value, otherwise we increment. So let's say, for, for example's sake, SJK doesn't exist in this user's um, row. We would get down here, we would, we would check and see the symbol SJK, does it exist? We would go, oh, it doesn't exist. Okay, we're going to emplace this new row and uh, give them a value of, let's say, 10. Okay, the next time this gets called, let's say we want to issue more tokens to this user. So now they have a 10 SJK in, in the row. This time we'll get down, we'll check the symbol name, we'll see that SJK does it, in fact, exist. And let's say we want to give them another SJK. Well, now we would just plus equals that SJK, and now the table would look like this for the Udemy course uh, account. And then the sub balance is very much the same thing. It's just rather than incrementing the value, it's decrementing, and rather than creating a row, it's removing a row if the row doesn't exist. So that is essentially issuing in a nutshell. From there, the final um, the final uh, contract we we or sorry the final method supported by the contract is a transfer, which is very very straightforward, right? Um, we're just transferring some sort of value from one account to another account. Uh, they make an assertion that you can't do that. They also make sure that the from account has actually signed the transaction. Otherwise, obviously, anyone will be able to send accounts however they want. Um, make sure that the to account actually exists. From there, we get the symbol name in order to check the stats table and ensure that this symbol actually exists. Um, this, I, I think, uh, is, well, I, I know, actually. <laughs> This require recipient means that the the node will get updated for both users, I believe. Um, so both of these users will be updated that okay, a, tra a transaction has a tra transfer has actually occurred from the for on account to the to account. Let let's let both of those uh, accounts actually know that that's happening, um, and then they you know again check for validity a bunch of different things, make sure the symbol is correct, the amount's greater than zero, all that other stuff. Then they subtract the balance from the from account, and then they add the balance to the to account. So that is very, very quickly, very, very briefly, the uh, ELSIO token smart contract. I'll see you in the next video.